The beauty of spring is in full bloom. Slow sunsets stretch, new life blossoms, and we feel ourselves recharge in the changing season. We notice the smallest shifts and subtle seasonal changes. The way that a fern catches the light or the first of the summer fruit. Connections unfurl before us, and we see hope in each rising sun and blooming flower. The goats teach us a joyful way of being. They never take anything too seriously, skipping everywhere and snacking along the way. So, as we work, we make sure to balance it with play. We've been regenerating this valley, pulling all the weeds and letting native plants thrive. The goats are such a great help with our regenerative work. Weeds are their favourite juicy snacks, so they spend their days wandering through this valley, eliminating devil's pigs, lantana and camphor laurels. A few weeks ago, I knocked down one of these massive devil's things. And then we just came back today, and you can see that the goats have nibbled off every little shoot and leaf on it. And it's just so incredible because they're such an invasive weed. And the goats seem to be the best tool in combating it. In this valley, we feel hope all around. Glimpses of light pass beneath the canopy, and leaves outstretch in its presence. In the rainforest, each fern, vine, leaf, and tendril shifts with intention. The tallest bunyas and red cedars catch the light, casting great shadows below. On the forest floor, the brightest ferns, palms, and mosses grow in darkness. In the massive flood 18 months ago, this valley turned into a raging river. Ancient trees fell, carried by the strength of the water. When one of these great trees falls, the forest falls with it. Suddenly, the forceful light pushes into the depths of the rainforest, where bare earth is broken by ripped tree roots, raw and vulnerable. In the rainforest, a macaranga is the first seed that sprouts from shattered soil. They climb towards the sun, their towering stems and immense leaves quickly shading the disturbed earth once again. Mimicking the balance of the fallen forest, they create habitat for the seeds of slow-growing grand trees that take root in their shade. It can take thousands of years for the biodiversity of a rainforest to recover, but on the edge of destruction, the macaranga grows with ceaseless hope. In their intentional growth and generous shade, these seedlings protect the forest. It is their purpose to imagine a better world for those who will come after them. Like the Macaranga, our hands must cusp the light and shape it for those to come. In boundless hope, we cast protective shade and nurture growth in the most barren land. We will sow seeds of hope and cultivate a forest of the future. But a Macaranga sapling does not act alone. One singular seed would not be able to shield the earth. Instead, countless seeds awaken from dormancy, catalyzed by destruction. They have evolved for this purpose. In a thousand small sprouts, they heal a patch of ground, joining their shade in a protective blanket of care. Their collective purpose creates a wave of growth, and the slow-moving giants of the rainforest sprout in its wake. In nature's extraordinary resilience lies the answer to our future. Together, we can rise from broken earth like stirring saplings activated in care. The hopeful seeds of a better earth lie dormant under our skin. They awaken in the knowledge of our past and the vision of a wondrous future. This potential to nurture is within all of us. From dormancy to action, we can join the current of nature's unwavering ability to heal 
it will carry us home. Somewhere in my memory, going back now centuries, can recall the time we made the before we were so fast. So I wonder, oh I wonder, yeah I wonder. Consciousness go out into the garden just in time for sunset as the sky begins to darken. Overgrown and tangled up, the bramble needs some greening. All the weeds have sprouted out of the grass is barely breathing. What do I know about nature and her needs? Blindly assume. We are so excited. Our book is coming out in just two weeks now and we are so excited to share it with you. It's going to be out on the 21st of November, so... Nah. <laughs> Aphrodite, I know you're very excited. <laughs> so on the 21st of November you can get it in bookstores or you could order it now and then you'll be sure to be the first one to get it. We're also hosting a local event to celebrate the launch of the book, so it would be so cool if you were able to come to that. It's going to be in Byron Bay on the 21st of November as well, and we're just, we're so excited about it. We love this audience so much, and honestly, it's thanks to you guys that we were able to write the book, and it would be so cool to be able to meet some of you guys. There'll be local food and drink at the event, and our friend Indira Elias is actually playing music, and you probably know her incredible music from many of our yeah. videos, so it'd be so cool to see her play. The event is also alongside our yeah. friend <laughs> Aphrodite, our friend Annie from Dreamy Moons, who is releasing her incredible Year of Growth diary at the same time. So there'll be books there and we'll be signing them and you can get your copy there. It would be so cool to meet some of you guys in real life. Aphrodite wishes she could come, but she's not allowed. This is what Aphrodite wanted the whole time. She wanted all the attention for her. Hmm? The least we can do is show her some sympathy. I have this Lucien Yak jumpsuit, but I don't wear it often, so I'm going to upcycle it into something that I love. Adding just a little bit of something has the ability to completely revive something from my wardrobe. My plan is just to add some embroideries and a tie that pulls it tighter at the waist. I need some extra material though, there's always a few steps to upcycling. So this is a pair of my mum's jeans that she wants hemmed, so I've just cut off the bottom of them and then I'm going to use them as a cute little waistband for my jumpsuit and I think I'll embroider some flowers on it so that everything ties together really well. And then these I'm going to hem for mum and I found the perfect top stitching thread, which is the perfect colour, and so it'll all tie in beautifully. For me, sewing holds the same intentions as regenerating. It is to hold a vision in your mind and work towards that goal. 
It is to view the land or material as precious and full of hope. Flowers seem to be a motif that I'm always drawn to, and I think it's because of this. They represent the power held in nature and the hope of a single seed. As I embroider flower after flower, I feel myself bloom with hope too. Consciousness go out into the garden just in time for sunset as the sky begins to darken. Overgrown and tangled up, the bramble needs some preening. All oh, the weeds have sprouted out of the grass, is barely breathing. We're planting a green manure crop in the orchard. These seeds are fast growing and will suppress weeds, retain moisture, add nitrogen to the soil, reduce compaction and overall just improve soil health. It's a beautiful rainy day and the first time that we've had rain in weeks, so it cools for a celebration. Our springs are always dry, but this year it has barely rained. After three of the wettest years in history here, it feels strange to miss the rain when it has been so destructive recently. But it just teaches us the delicate balance of nature and to celebrate the seasons as they come and go. Those familiar textures and colours And now your heart is true love Within the vines of all the poets and lovers This is Aphrodite and they are all self-shedding sheep so they lose their wool when it comes time for it. But Aphrodite is just not the best self-shedder in the world, are you? So she's got like a lot of wool that always stays for some reason. So I'm giving her a little haircut and lucky she is the friendliest sheep in the world and she just loves pats so much so she loves the haircuts because it just means extra pats for her. Oh, too much? What if I go around here? That big bit of wool Aphrodite. You're gonna look so pretty after this. Those familiar textures and colours. Now your heart is truly I don't know how many sheep there are in the world that lean in for cuddles while they're being shorn, but this is one of them. Anastasia gave Aphrodite a haircut and we used her wool to mulch the tree and now it's looking so happy. There's always a purpose for everything, even the sheep's funny little bits of wool. Today we're doing something very exciting. We're off to a friend's house to get a ram for our flock of sheep. This is Natalia and her son, and we've never actually visited her before, so we're getting a tour of her incredible permaculture garden. Natalia has so much knowledge of the land and animals, and we're excited to learn from her and collect cuttings and seeds for our own garden. 
It's always so inspiring to see people growing such abundant food and flowers in our climate. Swings with her basket, taking in the air. Down through the rows to see who else might be there. Madam Hedgehog with Graven or Solomon there. In the place where she goes to listen and share. All the little things that she planted, all the little things that she took for granted, one by one they quickly fade into nothing. Funny how the mind plays tricks once you start it, questioning where you belong. Worried you got it all. And Natalia is a creative too. She sews these beautiful patchwork quilts on a foot pedal machine. She even collects wool from her sheep and spins it to create yarn. In her garden, she also grows cotton, which I'm so excited about. I had no idea that you could grow it here. She has me so inspired to try to grow my own fibres for sewing and creating. To collect wool from the sheep, grow cotton or hemp or linen, and to really understand the process from plant to fibre. But after being distracted for a very long time in Natalia's beautiful winding gardens, we got to meet her flock. This is Sardinia, who is soon to join our flock. We can't wait to get to know him more and to welcome some of his baby lambs soon too. Thanks for watching, and don't forget that it's just two weeks until our book comes out. You can pre-order it using the link in our description. The music in this video is by Aaron Gold from Parking on the Wild Side. Their links to their music and to their YouTube channel full of incredible adventures is in our bio too. Thank you so much to our patrons. Your support actually let us buy the new tool that we've been using to pull weeds. And let me tell you, my hands have so many less thorns in them now. Thank you always. Golden retreating, time to head on back. Carefully steps to not fall between the cracks. All that she wanted, she knows is still intact. In the place where she goes to just sit and relax.